What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So there's actually been a quite a bit of handheld news this week, but really what I've been kind of focusing on, on is Intel. A few days ago, they had talked about their Panther Lake upcoming CPUs in the 2026 launch and some exciting information there. And then we also got some more updates today, a little bit more about the release and kind of the staggered timing of these new Panther Lake CPUs coming from Intel that's gonna be focused on the mobile gaming, laptops, handhelds especially. And that type of thing but there's a good bit that i kind of want to take a look at and talk about i want to look over this article a little bit and just kind of discuss the upcoming intel panther like cpus and where this might fall in line for you know the handheld market because there's just some interesting things happening there i love seeing what intel's doing um but the question on my mind is are these chips really going to show up in these devices so anyways let's go ahead and get into it we'll start by taking a look at this article and we'll talk about this a little bit all right, so first off, I talked about an updated article that was discussing possibly the staggered uh, release of these things. And it says here, Intel's all-important Panther Lake mobile chip rumored to launch later this year with just one model, and it won't be getting the exciting graphics option. So we're going to be talking about some 12 core variant graphics options and stuff in the other article here in just a minute. But this is really talking about only really one SKU releasing and it being more focused on, I believe they say here, a four core um, iGPU right here. So much less than the full blown 12 core that we're gonna be talking about when it comes to Panther Lake. So my assumption here is Intel is gonna have a few different SKU of these, you know, probably maybe four, eight and 12, if I were to take a guess, just a stab at it. Uh, what they're going to be doing there and this being the lower end first release for the very end probably November December 2025 and then into 2026 between January and March get into the rest of the releases um, so yeah that's just kind of what I'm gathering from that but yeah it does look like a staggered release we did talk about Panther Lake before and we did talk about it launching at the end of this year and apparently that rumor a couple of months ago was probably pointing to this lower end four core graphics uh, Panther Lake chip here that they're going for. So we'll have to see how things see how things pan out with all of that. But I really want to go back to focusing more on uh, the main thing here, which is going to be that 2026 variant that should be uh, a huge improvement even over the Series Two Core Ultra Seven that we have now. So let's take a look at this here. All right, and this article is just from a few days ago this week on April 29th, and Intel's upcoming Panther Lake CPU looks like a killer gaming handheld chip thanks to a reported massive graphics upgrade, hefty AI performance, and upgraded e-cores. They're talking about up to 50% more uh, on the graphics cores here. So Intel's 18A process node and the Panther Lake CPU that will be the first to use it are together looking like an absolutely critical turning point for the chip maker. The good news for Intel is that Panther Lake is shaping up to be a killer mobile CPU if the latest reports are accurate. First up, according to some device ID listings uncovered by X user Instalat X64 uh, via WCCF Tech, Panther Lake will be getting Intel's next gen Darkmont E cores, not the Skymont E cores, already in the Arrow Lake generation of CPUs. This makes sense on two counts. First, Darkmont is said to be a revised and upgraded version of Skymont rather than a radical new design. Second, Intel is on record that Darkmont is going to be the basis for its Clearwater Forest server chip uh, early next year, and that will be built on 18A silicone, so the Darkmont e-cores will work for that new 18a being an updated version of skymont all right so in other words darkmont has been designed for 18a while skymont would need to be redesigned and ported from the tcmc and three node on which it's currently being manufactured all right so next up the chip is said to sport 180 tops of total ai processing power this is uh, a step over the 120 tops of its current lunar lake mobile cpu being in our claw e ais now Lunar Lake largely splits the tops between a dedicated NPU and the GPU with 48 tops from the NPU and 67 tops from the GPU. The remaining five come courtesy of the CPU cores. So for this, a fair chunk of that step up from 120 to 180 tops has likely come from Panther Lake's GPU. Arguably the most exciting element of the new chip it not only gets an upgrade from Intel's new third gen celestial GPU architecture, but it also steps up from the eight graphics battle mage spec cores in Lunar Lake to 12 cores. And this is where they're talking about, you know, fit up to 50% more here on the power. And I've already said how great 
the AI, uh, the AI Plus has been with the Series 2 Core Ultra 7. The original MSI call last year with their first generation was pretty rough. I didn't keep that device here for testing and couldn't recommend it. But then turn around a year later and Intel did a fantastic job with the Series 2 of the Ultra 7. MSI did a great job with the Claw 8 AI Plus and it's one of my top recommended handhelds currently if you can get your hands on one just right there above the Ally X and the Steam Deck and all the other ones that come in line there. So yeah, this has been a great step up for them with Battle Mage and the 8 core. So if we're going to a more efficient, even better performing core for GPU plus adding four more and going to 12, we can see some really good stuff come next generation. That's the kind of thing I've been talking about when it comes to Intel, when they showed what they could do from that series one to series two is when I finally started to get a little bit excited about Intel again and what they might bring to the mobile space. Even if you're not interested in using them and you wanna stick with AMD, which I'm a huge AMD fan, I just wanna see the competition because I wanna see AMD get pushed, I wanna see Intel push, and I would love to see some others get in the space, but that would really help things. I love AMD, but they've really been dominating since 2020 and the 4500U and so on, and it's been great to see what AMD's done the past five years and I want them to continue, but I love seeing Intel try to catch up here and maybe even surpass eventually and really offer some real competition in the handheld space. At least I hope that's what's happening. All right, so it's fairly likely Celestial will be a more performant per core than, that's what I was saying, more performant per core than Battle Mage. So an expectation of over 50% more raw performance is reasonable, though that's not necessarily translated into 50% plus higher game uh, in-game frame rates, which yes, just because you add a certain amount of raw power to a GPU does not equate to that same thing in frames per second uh, always with that. But it certainly is going to perform a lot better than our current uh, Series 2 Ultra 7, which is actually quite impressive. For the record, Panther Lake will also get Intel's new uh, Cougar Cove P cores. The top SKU is reported to be a chip with four P cores, eight E cores, and a further four lower power E cores, and perhaps the lower SkyMont specification. Anyhow, Panther Lake certainly has the makings of a fantastic chip for handheld gaming PCs. On paper, it should have the measure of AMD's latest Strix Point APU, as seen in the IA Neo 3. Intel's current Lunar Lake chip, used uh, to great effect in the MSI Claw 8 AI+, Plus, which we've been talking about, is pretty competitive with AMD's Strix Point chip as it is. Add 50% more graphics cores and it should really fly. And this is what I've been talking about. The uh, Claw 8 AI+, Plus already outperforms the Z1 Extreme, uh, typically in games, unless there's a driver issue for me. It could be 5%, 10%. I've seen 15, 20 or more. So it's going to be more competitive with the Z2 Extreme and those other newer chips that are out now. And if Intel was able to launch that uh, in January and be able to catch up that much and be competitive, then sure, later on this year when we get the Z2 Extremes and other stuff, it's going to be fantastic. But then Intel's likely to be right around the corner. Uh, we can probably pre-order these if there's any devices that are going to use them, which we'll talk about come November, December for a January to March launch. So we could be five to six months away from a pre-order already on something like these. So we'll just have to see how that pans out. But I think it's pretty exciting to see what Intel might be uh, bringing over here. But anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the article. We get a general idea of what we could really be looking at with Panther Lake for 2026. I'm not too excited about that 2025 SKU launch with the four uh, iGPU cores, but the heftier 12 core, the uh, full-fledged Panther Lake CPUs that we're waiting for for next year that we should hopefully see in the handheld is what I'm really interested to see. I'm super excited to get into AMD's Z2 Extreme later this year and definitely going to be interested in getting into these new Panther Lakes probably again maybe pre-order six months from now maybe we can get our hands on these in about nine months and it seems like a long time but the order I get that's really just the blink of an eye. We're already going to be on these anytime, anytime now but yeah, but what my real concern is here, now all this excitement, and I love seeing the competition, I love seeing what Intel's doing, I'm still a huge fan of AMD, I'm so happy I can always have both of these things here and test them and, and have fun with all of them, but what my concern is, is we just reported on a rumor that MSI may be switching over to AMD later this year, and we haven't gotten a confirmation if that's a switch to AMD for their call series, or if it's adding a SKU, so we'll be able to choose from the Intel side or AMD, which is what I hope and think is happening. And I would love to see that idea with more handhelds. You're getting your Legion Go, you're getting your LIX, your MSI Claw or whatever, you could choose an AMD or an Intel build and pick your variants from there. Even if there weren't a lot of other options and I just want to keep it clean so it didn't get too cluttered, at least have an AMD and Intel option. I think 
that would be something really great to see. And with the competition coming, that would be really awesome. But my concern is just what we're seeing so far. We haven't seen a lot of uh, adoption for the Intel stuff and with the rumors about the MSI going to AMD and things like that. It just leaves a little bit of doubt in my mind as to like how much we're going to see this in the mainstream handhelds here, especially the ones a lot of us in the US would get from Asus and Lenovo and all that um, and how that's going to pan out because, you know, we only have had the MSI Claw here easily available uh, in the States to grab up with Intel. They've been the mainstream pusher for Intel and it's been great with the new series this year. Uh, so hopefully they're going to keep Intel and just add AMD and we'll get these new series and a new claw next year and that'd be awesome. But I'd also like to see others come on board and have the option for Intel as well if they're going to be doing that good. So we'll just have to see. But my main concern has been, are we going to see this thing anywhere in any of these mainstream handhelds? Is it going to get adopted and used for these handhelds by MSI, hopefully, and by others or not? Um, so really excited to see where this goes, kind of what Intel is up to and how good this could really get because I've been impressed by the current MSI uh, qualm and with their Series 2 Ultra. Uh, so yeah, really excited about this and all the stuff AMD's got coming, but uh, I just hope we see it in devices and we can get our hands on them, readily buy them, and people can go buy them if I recommend them and not be so hard to get or not exist. So anyways, guys, just kind of a ramble on here, but I had a lot to think about with this Intel stuff because it's something I get really excited about, but I also have some concerns about too. So We'll just have to see how it pans out, and I'll continue to cover stuff like this all year as we get closer to these new chips and uh, where they might land in uh, what handheld. So anyways, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.